I went back to confession, and the one thing that I was terrified of was the Bible. And a man came to pray with me two years after I had been to Medjugorje, and he handed me his Bible, and I said, you're wasting your time giving me that. And at that stage in my life, I was 50 years old, and I never read a book. Because I was told that I wasn't able to read. And when I was a youngster, I needed glasses, I say, since the day I was born. And I didn't get them until I was 12. And at that stage, it was established that I was unteachable. And because I was being so stupid, I was put at the back of the class, which made the problem worse. But what it gave me was the most incredible memory of anybody. I've met, I brought thousands to Medjugorje, and I met Noreen. I haven't seen her since when? 2012. Huh? 2012. And I walked in the door, how are you Noreen? 10 years. <laughs> because God gave me an ability to memorize things because I couldn't read them. But in 2005, I decided with another girl that we were going to have David Parks. Do you know David Parks? Yes. Yeah. And I said to David, I wanted him to come to Westport with a 25-piece orchestra, and I wanted him to play in the church in Westport, and the church was packed. And that was the church that every day, for years, I walked from the sacristy out onto the main altar as a young 9, 10, 11, 12, up to the age of 14, I went out there serving Mass. And I'm 50 years of age at this stage. And the church is packed because I packed it. And there was Jerry Glennon from a radio station, and there was Anne Corcoran who also helped to fundraise. And we raised 65,000. And I was bringing half of it to the mother's village, and she was giving half of it to the cancer in Castlebar. And they both looked at me, and they said, go out there, Jim, and tell everybody they're welcome. And I looked at the door of the sacristy, and I couldn't go out. And I knew there was more wrong with me than I knew. Because the donkey that walked up and down the corridor of the school for all of those first three years, he was standing in the door, and I had to pass the donkey to get out. And I was coming to Medjugorje four times a year, and I would heard about the Bible, and I had one at home, but I was terrified to pick it up. Because as soon as I read two words together, it reminded, I was nearly waiting for the clouds. Anybody like that? Is there anybody here of the old school that when they're sitting down and somebody looks in over their shoulder, they get the heebie-jeebies? That man with the glasses. He knows what I'm talking about up there. <laughs> and I'm there, and I know that the only answer to my problem was to get rid of the opinion I had about myself. And I have been going <clears throat> the first seven years that I was sober. I spent six of them with five different counselors and they all told me exactly what was wrong with me. They told me why I was the way I was. They told me I had to forgive. They told me I had to forgive myself, which, by the way, is an impossibility. Because if I could forgive myself, sure, I could set up a confessional stand out there and forgive the lot of you. <laughs> Couldn't I? I'd be still there thinking I was forgiving myself. But I knew I was in deep trouble. And coming to Medjugorje, and I was getting more nervous. And then I read a line in the Bible where it said, the word of God is living and effective. And it's sharper 
than any double-edged sword. And Jesus told me out here, he said, if you put my word in, which is the truth, he says what it does is that it actually cuts out all the lies that you were told about yourself. Because he says when those people died, he says you continued telling yourself that you were no good. <coughs> and Jesus told me, when you, get, when you want to go somewhere, <coughs> you don't sit on the roof of your car and expect it to bring you where you want to go. He said, you have to sit inside the car in order to direct it. And he said, if my word isn't in you, you won't be able to go anywhere. And he said, my word is truth, and the lies that you have been told that you were no good cannot stand beside my word. And the more of my word you put in, he said, the lies have to go. So I could be in psychotherapy telling myself I'm lovable and I'm capable and I'm stupid. No, no, I'm lovable and I'm capable and you're stupid. <laughs> It doesn't do it because it's not spirit, it's emotion. And, there's no, and you know what this is here, don't you? This is a dangerous neighborhood. <laughs> if a police car were to pull up outside my head and they rang back to head office, this is car 52, we're outside Jim Brown's head. <laughs> Don't go in alone! <laughs> <laughs> Send in the dogs! <laughs> Put tear gas in the window at the top! <laughs> and this is where I spend all of my time trying to work out my problems. Mm -hmm. And you know what I ask Jesus for every morning? In 2013, I had a quadruple heart bypass and as you can see, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> but every morning now I say to Jesus, give me a head bypass. <laughs> and I say, Jesus, if there's anything you'd like to discuss, come around this way. <laughs> in here. Put your ideas in here. Amen. How many Amen. people here had a great idea about doing something the week after they went home from Medjugorje. 